adolescents, adults, families, and couples. You can find them on the web at carsoncenter.org or at 413-572-4132. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. It's Tuesday morning from 6 to 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plaz. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Who's the captain who will come out when there's 
morning welcome to superintendent spotlight uh it is it is april 4th chris i haven't been on the show in a while i know we um we were kind of laughing at school committee the other night because you know they were we talked they talked about the show and what was our tagline and we, i forgot and we we were kind of said yeah you know uh you know it's time to wrap with chris and zap and then i realized i, I don't remember the last time you and i did a show together it, i don't know if it was in the month of march or not I, i'm not sure and i've been a sure. little busy and um well, yeah, I'm back today. Next week, you're not here, and I'm not here next week. Right. So, uh, well, I'm glad we're here for today's show. I am too. I am too. And as every week, we broadcast live from Tigers Pride, uh, and so uh, I just again, they're open today, 10:45 to 12:15. Stop by for lunch. Their soups are chicken and gnocchi soup, and charred bean and sausage soup. They also have an awesome appetizer today: uh, buffalo wings, eight wings with celery and blue trees dressing for 250. That's unbeatable. I'm not supposed to talk you, about you, prices. No, but. you can't beat that. Uh, garden salad, southwestern chopped salad with cilantro lime dressing, and the entrees today: grilled lemon dill salmon over sautéed spinach. And chicken broccoli penny alfredo, uh, always cold and grilled sandwiches. And the sandwich special actually is a zapata sandwich special, which is turkey, salami, provolone cheese, avocado spread, lettuce and tomato, and your choice of toasted bread. So there you go. Stop by again. Enter through the gymnasium entrance. That is the menu today. Tiger's Pride is also open tomorrow for an all-you-can-eat buffet. Whew, thank yeah. goodness uh, my day's already booked, and I'll be nowhere near this place Me tomorrow. Too. Uh, I also just wanted to let folks know, Mayor Sullivan is pleased to announce that the 25th annual Easter Egg Hunt event will be held Saturday, April 13th at the Westfield Middle School grounds on 30 West Silver Street with participation from the Boys and Girls Club and Amelia's Park. Uh, the event is being organized into two different age groups this year. Groups uh, ages 1 to 5 will line up at 1030 and uh, anyone at 6 to 10 will line up at 1130. This is, of course, an annual awesome event. Any any billing in that one? DJ Pete has always been there the past three years. Oh, DJ Pete wasn't on the press release. <laughs> <Blower>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, there you go. So, uh, all right. Today, though, okay, we have a great show, Chris, right? No, I, I, I think so. Me I think too. so. We've been looking forward to this one. Absolutely. We have the Westfield, or the owners, the co-owners of the Westfield Starfires, right? We have Don Morehouse and Chris Thompson. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Very good. Good morning, Thank gentlemen. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for joining us. So Chris and I are avid baseball fans. That's kind of one of the reasons we're excited to uh, absolutely to be here. I know you guys had a kickoff at the shortstop a few uh it's been a while now. The time is this spring is uh, already it's going, it's by, going so. fast. But for our listeners, and and um, can you tell us a little bit about what if they've never heard of the Westfield Starfires? How did this start? Um, I mean, we're excited about it. We want to get others excited about it too. I know we'll talk about uh, collaboration with our schools in a little bit, but let's get some background and we'll have this got going. Well, the uh, Westfield Starfires are a uh, summer collegiate baseball team. So everyone, I think, uh, is familiar with the Cape League, okay. uh, which is yes. one of the more renowned summer baseball leagues in the country, probably the top one in the country. Uh, the Futures League is uh, based in New England. Uh, there are eight teams. We are the eighth franchise, and uh, Chris and I have known each other for 10 years or so. We've, we worked in minor league sports together with the Springfield Falcons at the time. And uh, always talked about ownership uh, when we were, you know, standing there on the concrete at the Mass Mutual Center watching hockey games. We would talk about, you know, what if we had owned a franchise? Uh, the opportunity came up this summer. Chris came up to my office and said, you know, let's do something. We looked into the Futures League and uh, 
and Chris actually made the call. He called the commissioner, and that started the process of us getting a franchise. And as you guys know, there's no better place probably in America to have a baseball team than Westfield. I was wow! Say, yeah. I, I, was, I, was just, I was just going to say Western Mass. Yeah, but. <laughs> well, now this is, uh, you know, I've traveled around quite a bit. I've lived in a couple of different places in New England. Um, and we came here in 2002 as a hockey family. I have two kids that have played college baseball already. Nice. And it's, you know, it just kind of... Uh, it sucks you in, and uh, yeah. it's been a huge, huge. It's had a huge impact on our lives as a family in town. Being part of the Babe Ruth World Series in yes. 2016. Okay. I think Pete had something to do with that yeah, too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And uh, and my uh, my middle son Sean went to the World Series with his 13 uh, year old team. Went out to Seattle. Nice. Uh, my youngest played in the 2016 World, World Series. Series. So wow. I've got you know uh, my oldest played at Westfield State for four years. My son, Sean, is there now. Okay. Oh, great. So uh, our our lives have been, like I said, we are immersed in baseball in Westfield. And uh, I think this is a great addition, hopefully, to the legacy of Westfield baseball. You know, we've yeah, got no doubt. Uh, some of the best collegiate players in the country will come here this summer and play. That's excellent. At Bowens Field. That's excellent. So what – like you think we started a franchise like how does that happen i mean i i'm just you know how, how do you that start happen? that in case chris and i in our retirement years, i was gonna we say we gotta when, when we're done in a few years yeah. Right? yeah well it started with a cold call and right after the fourth of july i reached out to christopher hall who at the time was the commissioner of the futures league and chris and i had an hour and a half conversation about who we are what we were looking to do and why western mass and that led to us meeting for about four hours the following week in Worcester. And Chris Hall and I just talked about the business of baseball. We pulled out budgets. Right. And we talked about pretty much everything but scouting players. Okay. And after that meeting, I called Donnie. I was driving back from Holy Cross, and I said, this could be real. So Donnie and I started the tour, and we went to several of the other Futures League markets. We went to Nashua, New Hampshire. We went to Wakona Park in Pittsfield, home of the old Pittsfield Oh, Mets. yes, right. the Mets. They have a facility in Worcester on the campus of Holy Cross where the Worcester Bravehearts have been extremely successful. Uh, they average 2,500 fans a game. Wow. The Bravehearts are sixth in the nation in attendance in summer baseball. Really? Summer wooden bat league ball. And what we really found was the ownership groups that do very well run it like a minor league operation, and that's my background. And it's exactly what Donnie and I had talked about for many years. A little bit intimidating when we went to Nashua. I can imagine. I, uh, yeah. 3,000 seats, and they have suites. Obviously, Holy Cross. Uh, for a beautiful for, They facility. have suites? They do. Wow. They do. <laughs> and I remember going to Wakona Park in Pittsfield. My father would take me to the Mets, and prior to that, it was the old Pittsfield Cubs. Cubs. So the Futures League, you know, the model was to go into markets that have older minor league stadiums. Uh, but they also look for strong operators and a sense of community. So when we brought the group to Bowens Field, they walked around and they said, hmm, we could play a game here tomorrow. Oh. And I really that is because of the success of... Babe Ruth, right? Yes, and the support that the Westfield community has put into Little League and all of the baseball programs, you know, parents that work on the fields, that work concessions, that give the players a chance to play in nicer facilities. So it was because of those infrastructure improvements to Bullens that allowed us to say, hmm, why not Westfield? And as a matter of fact, during our owner's presentation, we had to be approved at an annual meeting and we got up there for about an hour and did our dog and pony show. Sure. I had a slide that said, why Westfield? And we went into exactly what Donnie touched upon, um, the success and the, the history of baseball. We want to continue that legacy. And I think the league was impressed, and they rolled the dice, so here we are. Well, and Westfield is a big baseball town, and I'll just – I mean, we've had – 
and at least from my perspective of the school, we have great baseball teams every year at Westfield High School, Westfield Technical Academy. Absolutely. Um, did you coach? Or that was yeah. soccer? You did? Yeah, and, and a lot of that is the, like we talked about, the history, the tradition, the feeder programs in Westfield have always been strong. Um, you know, I used to coach at Westfield High School, and I, I feel like I've been coaching in this city in one capacity or another, whether it's high school, little league, uh, in every level in between for about 20 years. I actually thought I was retiring this year, but I got dragged back in. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, but that's okay because because we love it. But but like you said, it's the commitment, it's the dedication, it's a tradition in Westfield. Um, and for years, our our high school our high school team has been a perennial power. And at Westfield Tech, we we've got a really good program too. Absolutely. So, and we have in Westfield State. Um, has turned into a very good program as well, and we've been sending a lot of kids from our high school to play at West at Westfield State as well. So it's, yeah, we it's... call them we call them Bomber Owls. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, I think when when. Team, um, there are three right now that are playing, um, and. Westfield, the town of Westfield has over 20 kids playing collegiate baseball this year. 20 kids that are on rosters, and some of them are doing really, really well. Wow. And that's, you know, you start with Chris Sullivan, who is down at Hartford, Hartford a D1 right. program. Mm -hmm. Kenny McLean is at UAlbany, another D1 right. program. Right. And these kids are performing at a very high level, at the highest level of college baseball. So for a town like Westfield, this size, to have 20 kids on college baseball rosters is phenomenal. Very right? impressive. You know, and uh, one of the things that we've done that I think makes us different than any other team in summer collegiate ball is we started building our roster from Westfield out. We have five kids right now on our roster that played Babe Ruth baseball at Bowens Field. Wow. So, and that's always going to be a focus for us to make sure that our kids have the opportunity to play in this league at that level. It's a heavily scouted league. They had over 30 kids drafted last year out of this league. So um, it's a great opportunity for Westfield kids to get some exposure. It's drafted baseball. drafted to what? Major League Baseball. Major baseball. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. And, and, <laughs> and you know, and again, a difference between, as, as everyone at the table knows, you get drafted, it could be in a, a, any number of hundreds of rounds and playing for all different minor league affiliates. Sure. Which is, which is really the huge difference between baseball and all the other major sports in terms of the draft. But you, you mentioned scouting, you know, earlier. I, I was going to, you know, maybe we can talk about it deeper in another segment, but is analytics playing a part at all in what you guys are doing? I think the one word to sum up our scouting is going to be relationships. Relationships. Yeah. So Evan Morehouse, who played baseball and hockey at Westfield State. Yes. He's actually our baseball ops director and evan is building a roster and he's taking his relationships from his hockey circles across the region across the northeast and he's being introduced to the baseball coaches to be able to develop a pipeline Excellent. of players and once that kid gets here it's our then our job to make sure that they have a tremendous experience in western mass they have a great summer experience they go back to campus they're talking to their head coach they're talking to their AD, they're talking to their teammates that are a little bit younger, maybe freshmen or sophomore. Hey, Westfield's a place that you want to consider right. for summer ball. Um, analytics, we have a on-field manager, uh, which we can get into it in, in another segment. Sure. Billy, Billy Sandillo. And, yeah, I saw uh, that. Billy brings uh, a wealth of knowledge, 20-plus years, coaching at all different levels. Excellent. So he's coached. In the Cape League, the Northwoods League in the Midwest, Midwest. that is baseball. He was in Italy last summer. Oh, wow. And he has a performance academy out in Scottsdale, Arizona. Excellent. And Billy's a West Springfield guy. So he reached out several months back and wanted to be considered for the job. And Donnie and I had a few conversations over those initial weeks, and he just... He got us excited about how he wants to run this operation. So I think there's a combination of the new age of, air, of analytics right, and right, old right. school relationships. Old school relationships. relationships too. Scouting. Excellent. All right. Actually, that's that's um, that's perfect. Perfect. I think we're nice segue to the next uh, <laughs> next segment. Uh, but we do have to take a break. It is 9.03. Again, we're broadcasting live from Westfield Technical Academy on Superintendent Spotlight. We'll be back in a few minutes. 
The reason I... programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. It's Tuesday morning from 6 to 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Platt. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Hi, from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM 
WSKB. Our, our plans are and evolving. welcome back. It is 9.08 a.m. We are back on the air. Uh, and uh, our guests today, we have Don Morehouse and Chris Thompson from the Westfield Starfires. We're talking a little business off yeah. the air, <laughs> so you may have uh, caught a little bit of that. Sorry about that. Um, but, you know, when we uh, went for the break, we were talking about uh, analytics. We were talking about scouting. We were talking about players. I'd like to pick up on that because I think we were going into uh, – a good spot. So, and actually, that is the how. How are the players on the team? How many do you have? Let's talk about some the players a little bit, if you don't mind. Bill, we've got a, a roster, I think, of about 30, 35 right now. Right, and um, I know some of them are from Westfield. But yeah. how did you put the roster together? Who put the roster together? So, uh, my son Evan, who's okay. our director of baseball operations, he's actually the director of hockey operations up at UVM. Okay. So, um, you know, we reached out to him. Uh, because he's really good at what he does. You know, sure. he's kind of proven sure. that over the last couple of years since he graduated from Westfield State. He's had a pretty interesting career path in um, in sports and sports management. So uh, we reached out to him. He went to work right away. And, it, again, he would reach out to college hockey coaches and say, introduce me to your baseball guy. So, um, and, and starting from Westfield, um, got players like Ryan Toll, who's at Fitchburg State. Oh, yeah. So, Star in the high school, Anthony Clark, the catcher, catcher. for AIC. Yep. Um, Mason St. Pierre, who graduated last year, yes. he's at AIC, AIC as well. So that was kind of easy. The, the right. low-hanging fruit. You right. You the best right. players locally, and you get them on board. Um, Ryan Toll was actually the first player that we signed, and I called him. I have his cell number. I called him and said, Ryan, we want you to play for us. We'll tell you a, a <laughs> funny story. We went up to Pittsfield um, as visitors last summer. Um, the general manager invited us up before we actually had the franchise, and Ryan was pitching for them. And he came off the field, Whoops. Ryan Toll. He came <laughs> off the field, saw me, came over, gave me a hug. I introduced him to Chris, and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, we're, we're going to put a Futures League team at Westfield. And he kind of looked at me and said, I, I, you know, I'm in. <laughs> so, in between uh, innings? So, yeah, it, it was actually in between innings. And, uh, you know, the rivalry with Pittsfield continues. Sure. And, uh, that, was sure. The first, that was the opening salvo on our part. But uh, since then, you know, we have talked. We've got players from Kansas State coming in. Oh, wow. We actually watched one of our pitchers from Kansas State on ESPN3 two nights ago. Um how do you in, look? Came in and struck out the side. There you um, go. You know, and it's interesting because, as as Evan says, we don't want him to do too good because you know maybe you know if he does too good, he'll end up down at the Cape League. Right. But um, we've got we're looking at players from Kentucky. We've got kids from uh, University of Hartford, Dartmouth, uh, UConn. We've got uh, a couple kids from Holy Cross. Great. So, um, it's really just as as Chris said. It's about relationships and reaching out to the coaches and saying, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, you know, do you have any players who might be eligible for something like this? And then kind of working from there. Excellent. Another funny snippet in terms of our Pittsfield rivalry. <laughs> we have hired Frank Cronella Jr. as special advisor to baseball operations. Now, you know, Frank's a Local kid, East Long Meadow, Bazone winner, played at Merrimack, and he was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. So he's been playing in Florida in their system and recently retired. Coincidentally, Frank played in the Futures League and loved his experience. So when the franchise came together, you know, Frank was at our launch, and he is close with Evan Morehouse to begin with. So he kept talking about listen, I'm, I might be coming home. I'd like to get involved. So Frank will be on board as kind of an advisor to our front office. He'll be a mentor to the young players coming in to talk about life after baseball. Okay. So after the announcement, I get a text from the GM of the Pittsfield Sun saying, you took another one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he played at Wakona Park during the Futures During the Futures League. Right. <laughs> So, awesome. that, you know, the, the players, anything else you want to say about the players of that process? Because I, then I want to like to transition to the season, the games, and all sure. of that. But No, I mean, I think that's, you know, the general overview. As, as we've said, we're always going to start from Westfield and work our way out. Right. You know, so uh, I had a chance to speak with um, 
uh, all the Babe Ruth players, coaches, and parents at a meeting they had a couple weeks ago. And, you know, I, I said the partnership with Babe Ruth is important for a lot of reasons, one of them being I know that there are kids in this room right now that will be on our team at sure. some point. Uh, we've already proven that, you right. know, that uh, if you play Babe Ruth baseball in Westfield, and you continue through this system. Like, Evan played four years of college ball. Right. Never played anywhere but Pullins Field. So he didn't play travel ball, didn't do any of that. He played uh, Little League, Babe Ruth, mm -hmm. Legion High School, Westfield State. Right. So he came out of Babe Ruth as a fully formed collegiate baseball player. Um, so we know that those, those kids at some point – can be part of our program and we're excited about that so i think that's really the message in terms of our 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 team will have some of the best players in the country and some of those players will be native westfield baseball players that's so a great story it really is yeah. it's exciting and and it really playing at Bollins and Bollins has been there a long time has a special history and, and i was the principal here when they got refurbed mm -hmm. um and how, how many does it seat do we know that i don't know um, as many as we can we okay. fit in. Yeah, <laughs> right, it's, fit. it's like with the... <laughs> so when does the season start? I guess the bigger question is, do you have any, any bleachers on campus here we yeah. can use? Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to move some things around. Yeah. Um, but the season's coming up, right? May 31st is opening, opening night. Day. Opening wow. night, right? Yes. And who are, we, who, who are the Westfield Starfires playing? They're playing the Pittsfield Suns. Interesting. Okay, yes. so we're so starting the season. Is that a little rival? That's You mentioned kind of the rivalry, right? So is that the main rival in the league for? Um, There's a long history of uh, interesting games between Westfield and Pittsfield. And Pittsfield, right. In Babe Ruth, in Little League, yes. in American Legion, yes. in high school. There is a long, storied history. It, um, with that rivalry, so we made sure that they were going to be here on opening night. On opening night, and that was yes. May uh, May thirty first. Thirty first. It's a six thirty start time. So that's really about less than two months away. <laughs> oh, it's uh, how, six <laughs> weeks away. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Time. So, yeah. Uh, what do you have left to do? I mean, are we are you, are you set? Are you? Yeah. I, Where do we start? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Well, how can, you know, what What do you need? How, how can we help? How can we help? Yeah. yeah. Well, we can so, get bleachers. That'd be good. Okay. Get an yeah, extra I'm set of bleachers somewhere. Working we, on uh, that? We are uh, working on uh, concessions. We, we have a concession company as part of this. Um, we need host families. So we have, you know, a dozen or so kids from outside the area that uh, need host families. Okay. You know. Can what you talk a little bit about, about that, yeah. about, about being a host sure. family? So uh, a host family basically provides a, a private room for one or two players. Some of them like to go in pairs if they come from the same college. Um, you know, a place where they can kind of do their laundry. Right. Um, they need Wi-Fi so they can open up their computers and do some studying and things like that. What kind of um, a commitment is it to be a host family? Well, you've got to give up a room in your, house, your house for the summer. Right. It's uh, so they're there all summer. They're That's, there. I guess. They're there from May, the you know, the middle of May through the uh, first or second week in August. So, um, you know, you would like to provide them with uh, some food, you know, so they can eat. You know, some access sure. to a refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, they, this team plays six days a week. So and there's uh, a away game, so it's not like it, there's three on the road, three at mm -hmm. home, or you know, some configuration. How many of games that. total are they playing? They play 56 games. Wow. Yeah. So it is a. Uh, they're not going to be around if you're a host family. Uh, they're going to come in, you know, after a road game. They're going to come in at you know 10:30, 11 o'clock, and they're going to lay their head on the pillow and not get up exactly until the next right. day. So. Wow. Bleachers, concessions, host families. What else? <laughs> Season tickets. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. On sale now at westfieldstarfires.com. So. Westfield Star, there we go. And we have two different types of season memberships. We have the grandstand reserves, which are the seats, the okay. seat backs. Yeah. For the low price of 149 for the season. For the season? Wow. Yeah. That's a bargain. Wow, that's fantastic. And we also have a $99 season membership. So they're folks that want access to our beer garden. They want to sit up on the hill. They want to mingle. So they can come and go all season for $99. Wow. 
How many of the home? So are half are home games. I'm just twenty-eight home games. Twenty-eight home. Yeah. That's a great deal. How about announcers? Things like that. Do you have all that set up, or are you are you? As as we said earlier, this is a constantly evolving oh, okay. right, 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 plan. Right, right. So uh, we've had people who have approached us about doing that. Um, but yeah, we need PA people. We need announcers. We're you know we're going to hire um, some ushers. You know people that can help out at the ball field. Um, some field maintenance people. I mean, there's you know, there's a lot that goes security. into this. Se- you know. Security too, probably. In well, there, right? we'll have two police officers, two officers on site, on site. At great game. So uh, we've kind of got that taken care of. In terms of the PA and the announcers and the ushers, are you interested in students at all? We're always interested in students. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Duly noted. Yeah. Right. That's absolutely. Or superintendents, or how about game broadcasters? Ga- well, that's what we were going to say. Game broadcasters. We're working, sure. on, we're working on that. Too. I mean, any anything you guys need, we're we'll be there to help. Yeah, excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of interested students probably right here at Tech, and yep. I've got a seventh grader that would love to get behind them. Soon to be eighth grader that would love to get behind the mic and get yep. his get his feet wet with it because that's what he wants to do. Sure. So yeah. All right. Um, I just got the word. It's 919. We have to take a break. I guess we have to pay the bills in between the commercials, all of that. So, folks, it's 919. You're listening to Superintendent Spotlight. We'll be back in a few minutes. And I just got the word. programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.com. Org. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. 
It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Hi, from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. And welcome back to Superintendent Spotlight. It is 9.24 a.m., uh, 41 degrees outside, a little windy, it's a little chilly, um, you know, comparatively to where I was last week, for sure. For sure. Um, but uh, there's a red flag warning today, folks. I don't know if you're aware of that. I saw that this it's, morning. It's uh, very dry out. Uh, it's windy, and... Um, Time for uh, brush fires. Even so. a simple cigarette butt will set off a brush fire. Absolutely. So be careful, folks. Another uh, reason not to smoke. Yeah, and throw them out the window because... I thought uh, a red flag fire. warning was uh, for boats. Um, I, yes, but... Also, the Weather Channel. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, again, today's high is going to be 49. going to be cold and rainy tomorrow, a high of 45. I think we may have a little mixed precipitation, that four-letter word that I can't stand that begins with S. We're almost home, boss. We we're are, almost home. we gotta, well, we got to get th- through April break, and then we're home, I think. Well, this weekend is going to be beautiful. High of 66 on Saturday and 65 on Sunday. Yes, so, indeed. Uh, great time to get some outdoor projects done. Um, and talk about we're almost home after April break. We have our spring concert. Concerts coming up. If you want to check them out on our website, uh, it's in our calendar. It's on our Facebook page. And it's up on Channel 12. I put that up yesterday. And oh, up on you, Channel. Pete. Thanks, Pete. Welcome. Beautiful. Uh, and then we have. Um, Chris, the birthday weekend, the 350th. Coming. You know, that was our show last week was all about yeah. the, the anniversary of Westfield, our, our birthday turning 350 and, you know, the whole birthday weekend of the 17th, 18th and 19th. So it's really it's really amazing what our city is about to undertake or has been undertaking sure. with this. And now we're now we've got a collegiate baseball team. I mean, what's next? I know it. It's amazing. But by, by the way, I, I wonder if we're the only city that has a big, huge birthday cake out in the middle. I was going to say the there green. aren't many cities with a giant birthday cake on the green. No, that's for sure. Sure. Uh, and of course, on you know, you have the Friday. They're doing the proclamation. Then there's a Run Westfield piece. I'm sure you talked about that last week. We did. Week. We did. Uh, Saturday morning, I will be flipping some pancakes and doing some cooking for the community breakfast. And we can spot. I I, did, I think we talked about being able to sponsor classrooms. Absolutely. With that I've too. already sent my uh, payment in to sponsor a class. All so right. uh, we're excited about that. There's just so much good stuff going on. Uh, and by the way, uh, if you hadn't figured it out, we are talking baseball today uh, because our songs have been geared toward baseball during the break. First, we heard Center Field by John Fogarty, and that last one was Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Got a little Bruce Springsteen and Eddie Vedder coming up for our next two. By oh, way. I thought we were going to do uh, New York, New York yeah. again by Sinatra. Well, I wanted to, but I didn't want to overkill it. Oh, okay, because we did that last week. We're doing terrible right now. Yeah, so we'll realize, talk about yeah. that in segment four yeah, a little bit. I really bit. can't yeah. uh, can't brag about it, but uh, so we again we have Don Morehouse and we have Chris Thompson here from the Westfield Starfires. We're talking about the season. Uh, you, you kick your big kickoff May thirty first, right? And you're playing. We're playing against the rival Pittsfield. The season goes to about the middle of August, correct? That's the regular season. So what happens after that? If we, uh, you know, when I will be optimistic. We may have to have a home game at Westfield State because there's a, a little tournament coming to town in August. Yes. There is. Yes, yes there is. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of a big deal. <laughs> there is. So what is the playoff structure for this collegiate league? What happens? You win your division, what, and then what, what, what's next? So out of the seven teams in the league, the top six do make the playoffs. Okay. And, um, you know, single-game format up until the finals. Okay. And we would kind of see where we stand. Um, what's the big game called? Is it a World Series? Like how do, what do they call it? Futures League Championship Series. Okay. Yeah. All right. So nice. it's not quite the World Series, but well, Babe Ruth they call it the Babe, it's World Series, right? right? I mean, so right. that's why I was wondering. Um, there is a parade, I think, oh. in May for the three fiftieth. Yeah, are you so guys? Maybe we'll have a parade in August. That, that'd be nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, now you're now you're talking, Chris. Now you're talking. Are you involved in the three? Not putting you on the spot, but if if are, are you guys doing anything for the three fiftieth? Will you have a present? Because there is a parade on the Sunday. 
Um, I don't know if you guys are marching or not. We will have a presence. I know uh, we had to go online and kind of sign up to be, uh, you know, they asked us if we had a float. We don't have a float, but uh, <laughs> uh, we do want to be involved in that for sure. Excellent. That's so. a big, this is a big deal. Oh, I yeah. think a lot of people will be out and about for that. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty excited. Um, what else would you want to share with our listeners about the team and about the process as we move forward? We're, again, very excited about what's happening, but I think there's some props to several local elected officials. Excellent. So always good. Very early on in the process, Donnie and I approached Mayor Sullivan. Right. And he's a big supporter. I'm a, yeah. yeah. You know, big baseball guy. Yes, baseball he is. Family, Absolutely. And he's the he goes CEO to see his son the baseball play. Yeah. community. And we told him that ideally we don't want to be anywhere else but Westfield, but West. and we love to play at Bullens. So he he and his department heads helped us navigate the waters to pull this off. We had an extensive RFP process. Oh, okay. Right? We had to negotiate a lease with his administration, and then ultimately had to apply for a liquor license. Right. Once there was an addendum, um, you know, Tammy Teft. The chief yes. procurement officer, yeah, um, Shannon Reed. Shannon Reed. Reed. Oh, so yeah. these are all outstanding people. You know, Joe, Joe Mitchell. Mitchell. Joe, Joe Mitchell. Oh, of yeah. course, of course. And obviously Dan Welch. We oh, yeah, sat Dan. down very, very early yeah. on in the process for approval. Long time president of our Babe Ruth leagues. So Long Dan time. was the first uh, person that we met with. Um, met him over at the Westwood. We sat down and said, "This is what we'd like to do. Is it possible to add twenty eight more games to Bullens Field?" And he said, yes, we'll figure it out. And he was on vacation uh, going over calendars and sent us a calendar saying, these are the blackout dates. Let's start here. Start there. Right. right. We sent that to the league and, you know, they complained a little bit. We said, you know, this is a, a shared facility. Right. That Babe Ruth has maintained for, you know, 20 years yes. at least. At least. Yeah. So uh, this is the way it's going to be. And, and they put together a schedule that uh, that works. So starting with Dan, then we'll, we sat down with Brian Sullivan and we went into his office. And he said, "Before we even sit down, this is going to happen." Okay, good. We're going to yeah. figure out a way to make this happen. That, that, you know, that's, per, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and and like Chris said, that that administration has just been unbelievable in terms of getting us to this point in the process. So well, and you've done other outreach too, right? We've had some significant conversations with Senator Hummison, right, and Representative Velas, right. So maybe a I'm sure they're shameless both plug. Well. Maybe it's Mayor Hummison and <laughs> yeah. Senator Velas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, but you, you know, we also you were at a Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting recently too. So you're working with Kate. What, what's your what's your collaboration with the with the Chamber so far? Yeah, one of our first outreach was to Kate Phelan at the Chamber, and Kate is terrific. She has oh, yeah. a ton of energy. Um, she does. She's an advocate for. <laughs> All of her chamber members, and you know she'll do whatever she can to make these introductions. I was at a WeTuba meeting. Yeah, that's uh, our Westfield Education Day. Yeah, our Westfield Education. Very good breakfast that day. I might add Westfield High School. Yes, uh, yes. I joke that Chris would go to the opening of an envelope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the rubber chicken circuit since we started, and uh, but here's the thing. So so you know. Chris is, is a, he's from West Springfield originally. Right. He went to St. Mary's. He has Westfield roots Westfield as well. Roots. So, and so do you. Uh, I, well, I, I was born in Springfield. Right. Um, we came here in 2002. So uh, my boys are, are Westfield natives, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm a native of Springfield. Springfield. So. Um, and we've we've been to chamber breakfasts. Uh, we spoke at the Rotary a few days ago. Yeah. <laughs> when he but says we, he means, means him. him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was it was really impressive to learn more about the WeTuba collaborative between local educators in the business community. And I'm sure you probably have a whole show just on absolutely concept and how the rest of the state should be finding a way to work with their chamber to pull that off. But from that came the introduction to you. Yeah. And absolutely. we started talking about ways to get new education partners involved and getting the young kids involved in coming to games. So we are having two of our home games. They are going to be Wednesday, June 5th and Thursday, July, or excuse me, Thursday, June 13th. June 13th, right. Those games are going to be at 1030 a.m. And they'll be educational day games. Um, the June 5th 
ten thirty a.m. start. We're going to be hosting the intermediate the intermediate school. school. So we'll have eight hundred fifth and sixth graders out, and the goal is to kind of turn that game into an educational themed ball game where we talk about geography and where our players are from around the country. What universities do they attend? How do we tie in math and science? Excellent with statistics. Um, you know, the goal for us is to develop a fan base from a very young age and here's sure. a way for us to give back to the city of Westfield. Well, and you know, listen, that's the first thing I think we talked about because I, for us, we, our goal, we want to make our, our learning experiences for our students real, real, you know, relevant. real world and relevant. And right. this is a great way to, to do that while supporting a team from Westfield, which is fantastic. So yeah, we said the intermediate school is going on June fifth. We're still working out some details on the thirteenth, but I may have also roped you into going to read to some youngsters at Fort Meadow Early <laughs> Childhood Center, maybe some players. Um, and I know we probably haven't set that up formally, but we need to. Um, I was actually at Fort Meadow. I, I spent a good part of my morning there yesterday. Those kids are fantastic. Your players, if they can come in and do it, which I hope they can, they're going to have they're they're going to have a blast. Yeah. Um, but then, so the community outreach, and you know, it, it really builds on what you were talking about earlier, the relationships, and not w in, in securing players, but also within the community that you're Oh, sure. absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So um, I think you guys have done a, a nice job. How was your kickoff at the shortstop? I, t I know I wasn't able to make it, but was it, how was that? We had a couple hundred attendees in the middle of a snowstorm. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So that tells you what kind of a town Westfield is when it comes to baseball, Yeah, they, right? the, the turnout was unbelievable, and, and uh you know, as I, I was telling them, there was a Westfield High hockey game that night, and so there, you know, you take a playoff game too. I think wasn't um, it? I don't know if it was, was a it playoff game. It was on the road. Um, what, when was this? What was the date? February twentieth. February twentieth. Yeah, that, yeah. Ooh, yeah. That, so yeah. Uh, they were, uh, you know, so there was a big chunk of our audience. Uh, sure. That was uh, preoccupied right there, but really an unbelievable turnout, and you know, we had uh, obviously Mayor Sullivan spoke. Um, Chris spoke. We had some uh, speakers up on the dais, but what a great crowd! And all the you know the people that you see at Bullens Field, uh, guys that have pulled tarps out there, you know, to uh, make sure that the field was in good condition. Right. Um, it was great. It was it was kind of an affirmation to Chris and I that this can work in this community. This is the right place. To, listen, yeah. when I first heard about it, I was very excited. I think we both were like, "This is awesome." Um, also, right. too, we had the support of the local ownership groups of each of the Futures League franchises. You need that to move forward, don't you? And they came in from Nashua and Brockton and Bristol, and th those front offices came to support the launch, which the is launch pretty special. It. Can we talk about the logo for a second? Because I think it's a great logo. Who came up with it? And is it eerily similar to maybe another team, the colors? But just saying, anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh, who designed it, if you don't mind asking? And, and how did that go? Sure. So the Starfire was the original fighter jet up at Barnes. So 1957-58. Wow. So right, we're, right away, we're incorporating history. Yeah. And, I love and it. Right. I mean, so. This is, yeah. so we wanted to obviously pay homage to the city of Westfield somehow. Um, you know, uh, do you, you, you look at, at Barnes... Um, and, and kind of that, its ties to the community. We thought, all right, that's a good place to start. So Chris uh, tracked down a guy that does minor league baseball logos. He's also doing the logo for the 2019 All-Star Game, Major League oh, okay. All-Star Game. So pretty legit guy, a little scared at the, the price because, you know, I mean, this is what this guy does. But right. we reached out to him and... And Chris did an amazing job kind of, uh, I guess, talking him down a little bit, <laughs> getting us a discount as a, a new franchise. So he started the process, and it was uh, it took a while. You know, he sent some ideas. We kept tweaking it and tweaking it until we came up with the logo itself. It's beautiful. I'm looking at it right now. It's great. It's yeah, absolutely gorgeous. he did a great job. Yeah. He did a great job. And things we had to stay away from. We didn't want a W because there's a Every, every human town right, is a W. Right, right. Um, the colors, we, we couldn't go with red and black. Right. You know, Bombers. Um, we couldn't go with the purple. Tech. You know, yeah. so, I mean, we, we kind of had to, we didn't want to go with the green what and are the gold. Colors? The green and gold of St. Mary's. That too. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we wanted to stay away from. It looks great. So, what are the, the colors? colors? It's a Carolina blue with yeah, the gold. Yeah. It's great. Um, you know, the, the Tampa Bay Rays have a third jersey that's very similar uh, in terms of those colors. So I actually saw the jerseys last week because I went to the 
story. Every, so listen, I'm trying to visit every Major League Baseball stadium in yep. the country. That's a goal that I have. And last week I went to Tampa. Yep. Um, and as we were talking off the air, they were playing Houston. I think there were more orange shirts than there were Tampa sure. shirts. But um, uh, it was, I mean, I, I like the Rays. They're very good. But yeah. I, I can see the similarities in, in the colors. So now that I'm mentioning that Beautiful. I, went to the, I went to the store to buy, are you guys selling gear? We do. We have a, an online store at westfieldstarfires.com. Okay. There's some gear up there, some merchandise that you can get. Are you going to be selling them at the games when we you start will. opening? We'll, we'll sell merchandise at the games. That's perfect. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, all right, what else? I was trying to find a logo here to show you. The, the, the uh, primary logo that you see yeah. with Starfires in blue. Right. And we created a word mark that removes Westfield in gold. And, and it just has Westfield in blue. Just like you see on the Starfire. Star right. Fire. So we may have some Westfield gear available this summer. Oh, yeah. awesome. And the logo on the hats is going to be the S with the star? Yeah, that's the cap mark. That's the cap mark. Yeah, right. We, we kind of right. like that, too. We did a good job with that. I, that's so. beautiful. I'm getting a hat. Yeah. I'm Fitted? Getting... Or we have to... <laughs> yeah, we right? Do. Okay, great. We don't have to get... I'm not a huge fan of uh, adjustable, adjust... especially no, I, the I strap one. I don't... No, I can we never do that. Strap strap one. One. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. All right. 9.40. Uh, we're going to take our last break. And uh, thanks for listening. We'll be back in a few minutes with our last segment. Very good. Don't let anyone say that it's just a game. For I've seen other teams and it's never the same. When you're born in Chicago, you're blessed and you're appealed. First time you walk into a wiggly field Our heroes wear pinstripes, heroes in blue Give us the chance to feel like heroes too Forever we'll win and if we should lose We know someday we'll go all the way Yeah, someday we'll go all the way uh-huh. We are one with the Cubs, with the Cubs we're in love. Yeah, hold our head high as the younger dogs. We are not fair weather, but far weather fans. We're like brothers in arms in the streets and the stands. There's magic in the ivy and the old scoreboard. The same when I stared at as a kid keeping score. In a world full of green. Could never want more Someday we'll go out of the way Yeah, 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 someday we'll go out of the way To the men and the legends we know, teaching us faith and giving us hope. United we stand, and united we'll fall. Down to our knees today we win it all. Yeah, I heard a said, "Oh, let's play too." I did it mean two hundred years in the same ballpark? A diamond. The home of our joy and our tears Keeping traditions and wishes made new A place where our grandfathers, fathers, they grew The spiritual feeling if I ever knew And if you ain't been, I am sorry for you But when the day comes for that last winning run And I'm crying and covered in fear I look to the sky was right to think someday we'll go all the way.
support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Academy and just just to folks to start off this week we've got to congratulate our boys lacrosse team starting their uh, season with a beautiful 9-1 victory over Agawam yesterday at Roots Athletic Center um, our girls uh, tennis team uh, had a hard time yesterday um, against Longmeadow losing 5-0 but but Westfield's Clara Hink battled uh, valiantly did a great job um, and, and outstanding uh, doubles pair Thea Glenzel and Bridget Moriarty also also fought valiantly yesterday. Girls, keep up the good work. Keep working hard. Our defending boys volleyball champions were down uh, against Aguam yesterday. Battled back to rally so that our two-time boys champs were one set down but came back Tuesday, Tuesday night for a huge victory over Aguam. Um, hopefully looking to three-peat this year, boys. Keep up the good work. Um, quite a bit going on with us um, in the next couple of days. Today, our, so our girls' softball team taking on East Long Meadow at Birchland Park Middle. Our boys' lacrosse team hosting East Long Meadow at Roots. Boys' tennis at Holyoke. Tomorrow, softball team hosting Minichog at 4 p.m. While those uh, two-time uh, Western Mass champs, boys' volleyball, Hosting Minichog at 6.30. Girls Tennis hosting South Hadley. Girls Lax hosting Northampton at Roots. Um, and the baseball team, speaking of baseball, at Bell Rick and Memorial High School at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Good luck, uh, gentlemen. Excuse me, on Sunday, rather. Sunday. Good luck, gentlemen. Westfield Tech Academy, no sports schedule today, but tomorrow there are our boys baseball team at Smith Volk, 4 p.m. Good luck, gentlemen. And it's... Unbelievable! We talk about being in early April. It's Final Four season. Yeah, here a lot we are. Of sports going on. Right Absolutely, now. here we are uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the men's Final Four. Number five Auburn at thirty and nine, taking on Virginia, number one seed, thirty-three and three. Saturday, six oh nine p.m. And then our three seeded Texas Tech at three at two seeded Michigan State. Saturday, eight forty-nine, and a little bit closer to home in the women's bracket, Oregon, uh, thirty-three and four. Taking on number one overall seed, Baylor, Fridays at 7 p.m. But, of course, our UConn Lady Huskies taking on uh, their rivals, Notre Dame, 9 p.m. Friday night. And we talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago in terms of the UConn women um, being a two seed, you know, going into the tournament rather than being a one. Um, and I think we made the comment that if uh, we were Coach Ariema, we'd have simply walked into the locker room and wrote, written a giant number two on the whiteboard. Yeah. And that's all they would need for motivation. And, and here they are back in the Final Four again. Um, our Boston Celtics at 47-32 and 32, clinched a playoff berth, currently number four in the Eastern Conference. The Bruins at 48-23-9, number two in their Eastern Conference, and they're also in the playoffs. But, oof, the American League East is, looks a little upside down. At this point yeah. in time, Zach. the only solace I have is that the uh, Red Sox are doing a little worse. Not by much. No, uh, I know. Tampa Bay at five and two. Speaking of the Rays, the Orioles at four and two. Two of those victories against us. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Toronto at three and four. Our Yanks at two and four. The Sox at two and five. Uh, and, you know, I'm not into excuse making. Um, that's just not who I am. But, uh, the but here Yan comes an excuse. But here comes anyway. <laughs> um, the Yankees do have basically an all-star team on the injured list right now. Sabathia, Severino, Hicks, Andujar, Stanton, Batances, Tulowitzki. I can keep going, but I'm not going to in the uh, in the interest of time. Um, and speaking of time, um, very soon, about a month from now, we're going to have uh, 
our Keeping Children Safe and Secure online community event, the second time that we've had this, right. um, partnering with the United States uh, a District Attorney's Office and our local Westfield Police Department. They're going to be presenting uh, Project Safe Childhood, which is a presentation for parents, and I want to stress it's for parents and guardians only, not for students, on uh, May 18th uh, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Tacoa Country Club, 459 Russell Road here in Westfield. And again, right thanks, down the street th- from us. Right. Thanks again to Tacoa for hosting us. But, but ultimately what this is, folks, is it's going to cover a variety of, of topics about keeping our children safe online from social media use to what it means to have a digital footprint, uh, online gaming issues, cyberbullying, um, uh, Internet predators. Um, but, but ultimately it's about how... Parents and guardians can help support their children, keep them safe online with their internet use. Um, there will be light appetizers provided, um, you know, at Tacoa that night. I want to reiterate that Project Safe Childhood is not a press event. Uh, not that we don't love our local press and media, but they're not invited. <laughs> it's yeah. only for uh, parents and community members of of the, of the city of Westfield. Now the students, though, so there's there's presentations at both the intermediate and the middle school. Correct. Too, correct. The eighth the eighth of course at night is uh, like I've said twice is for parents <laughs> and guardians. Right. Um, but on the eighth. Um, excuse me, the ninth rather, we're going to have multiple presentations for grades five and six that are, again, developmentally appropriate for their age group. Um, again, working with the, our police department and the U.S. District Attorney's Office. And then on the 10th, uh, subsequently, we'll follow up at the middle school for presentations for our 7th and 8th graders. I'll tell you, that was an eye-opening thing even for me. I didn't realize uh, how how... There's just so much out there that our kids are exposed to sure. that we really you need to be aware of this, folks. You should attend. If and you the, have and the last time we had this event um, again at Tacoa with Project Safe Childhood, with the district attorney's office, and with the police department, we had over a hundred people, which yeah. we thought was fantastic, folks. Uh, I, I we would obviously love to have more people come out. Um, it is a huge topic. It's very prevalent. Um, and one thing that we 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 will be discussing, as I mentioned before, is that whole digital footprint piece. I mean, even if your children are responsible online and they're not getting involved in anything, you know, that could be dangerous to their health or safety, uh, we want our kids to realize that anything they post, it's there forever. It's there forever. forever. And we, we don't want to see that come back to haunt them right. when they're trying to get into schools, when they're trying to get employment going forward. That's also going to be a, par- a big part of this as well. Absolutely. Hey, there's something going on tonight, too, correct? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um We've got our uh, Special Education Parent Advisory Council, known as our CPAC. They've got a presentation tonight talking about uh, social skills. Let's talk about social skills. Bringing in Karen Kennedy, um, outstanding. She is. Um, And also, you know, being one of our autism consultants and specialists, um, will lead our discussions and answer some questions tonight, April 4th, right here, Westfield Technical Academy Cafeteria, 6.30 to 8 p.m., Child care is provided if necessary. Um, folks come out. Social skills is a huge topic. Um, we like to call them critical skills. Yeah, and, essential. And essential skills and yeah. life skills. And so it's going to be a really outstanding event this evening. So if you're available, 6.30 to 8, p- 8 p.m. WTA Cafeteria. And that's tonight. Um, at Westfield High School is also having uh, Mr. Westfield competition tonight, too. Uh, yes, interesting. Uh, interesting. Um, you know, and I want to piggyback on something that you said. You mentioned that lacrosse has been playing at Roots. Folks, I, you know, and, and it's been a topic, and I just want to at least address it. Um, they can't play at Bowens Field right now because the condition of Bowens Field, Bowens Field is really – uh, not the baseball. Not the baseball sport. field. That's just uh, making that clear. <laughs> just to clarify. Uh, but the soccer and football uh, field, it's in tough shape. And um, you know, the the city and school department are collaborating this spring, later yes, on this spring, are. to do some uh, some up some really some upgrading to the field, or at least leveling it off. Uh, if anyone remembers, you know, I had to move the. Um, Thanksgiving football game yes. from the traditional with, against Minichog from Westfield uh, Bowens Field at Westfield Tech here to Westfield State because of the condition of the field. And last year we we actually received some some word from the officials that they really you know had an, were having an issue sanctioning games there because they were afraid kids were going to get gonna hurt. get hurt. So we are fixing the field. Uh, of course, that is causing our games you know lacrosse to play at Roots. We've had to do that, um, and uh, of course we have to move graduation this yes, year yes. for the class. Of 2019, and I just want to shout out Eric Billowitz, and um, he's the airport manager, and just being able. 
able to work with him, we've been able to move graduation to the airport as really our only option in the city to go to because even if you, uh, you know, we talked, looked at Staley Park, looked at Westfield State, there's also going to be construction on Western Avenue oh, right at the end of May. So uh, there aren't a lot of other options other than indoors. And, folks, I n- almost never support indoor graduation. Unless. Because, <laughs> unless well, it, 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 the weather, but I've even, right. I mean, I, I've rolled the dice and, and had it, and it just started raining right at the end right one the time. End. Uh, because when you have indoor graduations, first of all, it's hot. And we have to limit numbers. And then you limit, you know. People can only bring two or three people, so that means grandma and grandpa from Florida who came up exactly. or wherever they're from, now they can't go because parents want to go. So we ob- obviously want to have as uh, many people attend our graduation ceremonies as possible. So that is why that, that, is why that happened. Um, all right. Uh, we are still talking baseball today. We have Don Morehouse and Chris Thompson here from the Westfield Starfires. Uh, we've covered so much today, actually. Uh, 56 games, 28 home games, right? Um, you guys are still looking for some, some help. In, oh, and I'm sorry. So the first game is May 31st. That is the kickoff night. I am quite certain you folks are going to sell out uh, for that, if you haven't already. I mean, I don't know. If people want to buy tickets, what do they do? Westfieldstarfires.com. And a good friend of ours over the years always told us never apologize for a sellout. No, you, you, you can't. <laughs> uh, no. Um, so, And they can also buy season tickets, right? And so that was the grandstand reserves for 149 or just being able to come to the game for $99, and those are available online as well. That's correct. Okay. Um, you're still looking for some help, too, correct? We're talking about con- um, host families, right? So if you want to host a, a baseball player for the summer, again, that information is also available online, right? Yes. And um, what else we got? Uh, corporate sponsors. You've got some of those too, right? How did that, so? Who's 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 sponsoring you? And how'd you get them? Well, I better be careful. There's a lot. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't want to forget anybody. I'm going I know. to miss someone. So apologize in advance, Chris. Yes. Right. The goal. The goal for us is to create unique marketing packages for corporate partners. Okay. And they could be a Westfield based company. It could be a regional franchise that wants to get involved to support the team. And I think people look at different reasons for why they want to become involved. Some, it's a straight advertising play for eyeballs. They want to get in front of potential customers. Sure. sure. Other cases, it's a philanthropic effort where they want their customers and their employees to see that they're tied to Starfires baseball. That's important to the mission. And it could be a, uh, a small business, someone that wants to bring their son or daughter and see their sign in the outfield or have a unique promotion. Um, everything we do is customized. So we'll sit down and talk about perhaps a social media program. It could be in-stadium. It could be something that's tied to a player appearance. So for us, we're willing to have that conversation and find something that's unique just for you. Are you looking for more sponsors? Is that an always thing? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's constant. We have a lot of unique community relations programs that are tied to sponsorship. So it's more than just buying a billboard out there. We really have some programs that we can put some activation behind. And that's that's what's unique about Starfire's sport and entertainment. Anybody can buy a billboard on the highway. Anybody can buy a 30-second spot on TV22. Right. But at the end of the day, you can do all that with us, but then you can activate with engagement with fans sure. in the stadium. You can use our social media platforms. We can find ways to drive the fan base back to your location. Well, this leads right into marketing a little bit, too. And you're doing some, you know, maybe some traditional, but some out-of-the-box thinking, too, right? What, what, can you give us some examples a little bit of what you're – I mean, we're aware, obviously. A kickoff at shortstop, which is a very popular place in Westfield, isn't going to hurt you. Uh, getting involved with the schools, obviously, is going to help, is going to help a lot. Um, anything else you've got for marketing? Ideally, for Donnie and I, it's be, being in this community every day. Right. You know, we're from here. We live here. Right. We have families here. So for us – it's getting in front of different organizations through speaking engagements, through one-on-one meetings. So now you can go out and tell our story. So there's traditional marketing, whether it's through digital or right. through a postcard mailing, a direct mail piece. But for us, it's getting out there and telling our story, uh, meeting with local little leagues, meeting with the Boy Scouts, meeting with local community colleges. Have you been to uh, well? Have you been to the Boy, Boys and Girls Club? I know those places. We, those are great, obviously, um, ways to, to market the team. How have you been received in Westfield? Do you think? You know, f- uh, you know, I do say this often. I've really never felt more welcomed 
Excellent. in the community. Excellent. That's and what we want to hear. It's been a little overwhelming, to be honest. Really? With you. Just the, uh, as, as Chris and I are going through the process, we kept saying, where's the roadblock? Like, where's where's the thing that's going to you know stop us in our tracks and say, this is as far as you can go? It hasn't happened. Everybody has been welcoming. Everyone's been helpful. Uh, we've gotten great advice, uh, great guidance. It, it's really been overwhelming, you know. Like it, again, I, we moved here in 2002. I can't imagine living anywhere else, right? You know, um, and not just because of this, you know. We oh uh, no, this is great this, community. This is sort of typical of what you would expect from Westfield. So. Right. We talk about it all the time. It's a great place to be. Very, very a very generous, a very generous community. People are always looking to help each other out. Uh, it, our partner, the community partnerships, all the departments working together as one. It's it's fantastic. And they want to see you successful. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, folks. That brings us pretty much to the end of our show today. Um, so next week you won't be here, right? No, I will not. But no. uh, you talked about the U.S. District Attorney's Office, so we're going to have Karen Legacy here. We're going to talk about that online safety piece. So that's really tune in. It's going to be along the lines of those where we did the vaping uh, thing too, oh, yes. where where yes. where I get taken to school literally they, when they talk about all these things that uh, you just didn't even know were out there. And I'm really glad all this stuff wasn't out there when I was a kid. I got to be honest with you, what our kids are have exposed to, to today, is, it, it's, it's really lot. incredible. It's uh, then the following week will be April vacation and we'll have a best of show Pete if you're listening uh, on the 25th we're going to have Rachel Kanye here she's our director of uh, food services doing and a great job she I absolutely is and, and we're going to talk about that because I don't think people understand about the whole school breakfast and school lunch programs and what and I just want to shout her out for what she's been doing to do some menu improvements for our kids including absolutely. bringing back a la carte and things like that on um May 2nd, we are going to have uh, some folks here from Westfield High School. We're going to look at something called Global Glimpse. Uh, so that's going to be an exciting show. And then, really, May and June, we're almost done. This is going to be our third year, co-host Rogers, on this. It's uh, unbelievable. And, and, and it just goes so fast. It really does. So, all right, folks, it is 10 o'clock on the dot. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Have a great week, everybody.